So that beautiful new rowing machine just landed on your doorstep. That UPS guy was like, you're that one person I don't like today. But they did it anyways. They dropped it on your doorstep. It's probably set up in your living room right now. And you're thinking, what else do I need to get started? Well, not much, but let's cover those top five accessories that are going to make sure you have a great experience on the machine and what accessories you can forget about before you get started. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse, where you build a life that you want to live, and we just happen to use rowing to help you get there, helping you get to be that person you want to be. Do you need accessories to get started rowing? No, but what fun is that? We all want to make sure that our experience is our experience and that you have the tools necessary. So let's talk about what accessories are going to help you get started quickly and enjoy your experience more. And don't forget those ones that you can really just forget about that everybody may say you need, but you really don't. Okay, let's talk about accessory number one. And this one I would say is a must. That is water consumption. Making sure that you have something that holds water that is going to be near you. Now, if you're in the middle of a workout and you have short rest periods, you don't want to be fiddling with accidentally spilling your water and you get off the machine. You got to go find a towel and do Nobody wants that. This is my standard water bottle. Goes with me everywhere. Pretty sure you can pick this up on Amazon. It's got a nice screw top. Screw it closed. It's got a little handle so that I can carry it wherever I want to go. I put my nifty little Dark Horse stickers on there. And from there, that's all I need. But make sure that you have your decision as to what that's going to be. If you're going to be doing a longer workout, think about something like a camelback on your back whereby you have a tube coming over your shoulder and you can just sip water as you go. Because whenever you stop rowing on whatever machine you have, that machine is still trying to attempt to calculate what your score is at any given time. And it is going to significantly impact your average score. So if you are looking to maximize performance, highly suggest having some kind of a hydration solution that isn't going to require you to stop. Option number two, sweat management. Now, this one is pretty important. Again, not something that you have to buy, but something you should think through you're gonna sweat a lot. The rower makes you sit in place. Like if you ride a bike, for example, you're gonna be riding down the road, wind will be blowing on your skin, the sweat will be evaporating off of you, you don't get as sweaty. Well, on a rowing machine, <laughs> you're staying in place. That sweat has nowhere to go but down. Gravity's just pulling it straight down. So the reason I started with a hat, because I need something to collect sweat around my forehead so that it's not dripping into my eyes. So something like a hat or a sweatband or a visor, great choice, something you should definitely think about. I'm happy you're with me on that one. Next up, I brought this out. This is just a little sweat rag. This is like a chamois, a sweat chamois. And so I keep this around me if I need to do like a quick handle wipe down, something like that in the middle of a workout. If you need to dab your face, great, you got that solution there. Think about the paths that sweat will travel down. Shoulder or armpit sweat is going to run down the arm because that arm is at a downward angle on the machine. Where do you think that's gonna go? Directly to the handle. What happens when your hands get damp and you're holding onto a surface and doing this repeatedly on that surface? That's when blisters start to happen. So mitigating any sweat that may come down your arm, wherein things like a forearm sweat band might be useful if you sweat a lot. But those are definitely things to consider. That sweat management is going to be a key accessory for you in the long run. And that way you're going to avoid the pitfalls of the uh, key, trying to row with one hand while trying to wipe the sweat out of your eye with a sweat covered hand. It's like getting hot sauce in your fingers and you're doing this thing. Sweat management. Next up is going to be Clothing options. What do you choose to wear when you're on the machine? It's also going to make sure that you're comfortable while you're moving and that you don't run into any safety issues. And I always start with the safety issues. The primary one being that you don't want anything so droopy, especially on the back, that it would get caught in the wheels of the seat. The same goes for very baggy shorts. Having something that is at least a little bit form-fitting, making sure that it doesn't hang down and back is going to eliminate any risk that you have. Now with traditional rowing uniforms, it's called unis or trow with that was what I was always wearing was just spandex shorts. That's trow. Spandex shorts with an extra layer of material on the butt because that's where you spend the majority of your time is sitting. And the thing that that serves to do is essentially hold things in place as well as to wick sweat off of your body. And now I love like seven inch shorts that have a built in spandex liner. 
Number one, that makes sure that I have everything contained and controlled that I need to. I get good moisture wick. And then as well, I get the shorts on the exterior so I can step off and go make my way into society and not feel incredibly awkward like I'm strolling around and, you know, too much spandex gear everywhere. The other piece is the shirt. I tend to pay a little bit less attention to this, but cotton gets very heavy when you sweat. And again, you are going to sweat a lot on the rowing machine. So think that through. If it's gonna bother you that it gets heavy and starts to stick to your skin, well, then you should probably avoid cotton shirts. Think about something synthetic that will wick moisture away from the body or something that even when it does get sweaty, isn't going to hold it and retain it for quite as long. So that clothing is going to be an important choice that you make in your accessory lineup when you are on the machine. Fourth on this must-have accessory list is going to be your tracking and whatever that is to you. Many people go for some kind of heart rate monitor. They always make sure that they are tracking heart rate and they like to use heart rate as one of their training variables that they're paying attention to. I always am wearing a smartwatch that is just generally keeping track of my activity. Honestly, you just have to choose what is right for you and what tracking you want. Do you love having data on your performance. If so, then probably a heart rate monitor that syncs with a smartwatch that connects to your phone is going to be incredibly important. So whether you are using a Whoop, a Garmin Phoenix 6, X Diamond Sapphire Plus, I don't know which one they're on, an Apple Watch, Erg Data, Polar Heart Rate Monitor, whatever it may be, take a look at what your tech stack is going to be because having that data will help you make decisions going forward. How hard should I train today? Do I need more rest? Should I step back from the rower? perhaps, and be taking more time to recover and rest. Finally on this list, are your general accessories. Ooh, look at these things, they're so pretty. This is kind of you outfitting your machine in the way that you want it to look and feel. So whether you're getting a seat cover, you can see this is a silicone seat cover. It just covers my seat. People think it's an actual seat sometimes. They see it in the videos, they're like, oh, what seat did you replace it with? This is a Vapor Fitness seat cover. They're the same people that make this silicone phone mount for the Concept2 PM5 that I absolutely love. I definitely suggest this, like this is a cheap accessory. Definitely add it to your lineup. And from there, you know, you can add in things like seat pads. If you feel like your butt gets too uncomfortable when you're on the machine, you can get thick foam pads down to very skinny gel ones to just almost nothing. Some people just use bubble wrap. The options are limitless on how you wanna customize your machine. So this is kind of where you get to have fun with the equipment and what you want your experience to look like. And that's going to improve your experience because you're going to enjoy it that much more. And now, what accessories can you avoid? Now, there are some that, for some reason, they've heard that, for example, a floor mat is necessary. Are they necessary? No, absolutely not. Almost all of these machines are built with rubber feet on them. They're not going to do any damage to normal floors. Aside from perhaps giving you a little bit of maybe noise protection, that's a case in which maybe you want to pick up a mat, but you do not need to buy a mat for under your rowing machine. They're intended to just be placed on the floor anyways. A little asterisk on this one. If your machine is scooting forward or backward, there is a good chance that you need to take a step back and kind of look at mechanics, especially if your machine travels backward. That means that you're pulling too hard on the machine rather than pushing into the machine that's going to drive force into it. Instead, you're kind of trying to heave the machine towards you, that will make your machine jump backwards. And some people say they want a floor mat so that their machine, machine doesn't scoot. Well, if your machine is scooting, perhaps take a look back at your mechanics because you do not need a floor cover mat. Number two, you don't need to buy a unisuit or trout. Frankly, I prefer rowing in shorts with a liner, some a spandex liner inside of them, because I just feel more comfortable. I can put my hands in my pockets afterwards and I can just stroll out of the gym. When you wear just trout or a uni, that's kind of your only layer of moisture wick, so often those get saturated pretty quickly and it shows and you, you know it gets real dark and whatnot. You can find great athletic lifestyle apparel that will work for your performance. Number three that you don't need, you don't need to go out and buy the latest tech to get a good experience on these machines. Don't feel like you have to go buy an expensive watch or drop a grand on a watch and a heart rate monitor. You don't. 
If you want to, and if you enjoy it, you are welcome to. But my favorite app that logs all of my training is just Erg Data. It's free, it's on every device, Android and iPhone. I've got all my results from all of my workouts that I've done. At the end of the day, tracking all of my data down to the infinite detail is actually unfun to me. I wanna enjoy my training, and so for that, I tend to step back and be a little bit more relaxed in the way that I track my data, and I would encourage you to as well if that feels right for you. All right, what did I miss? What are the accessories you need? What are the ones you don't? Let's hear the discussion in the comments below. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you become a dark horse. Join the community of dark horses all over the world, making their lives better. And if you're looking for other gear reviews or tech specs, things that you may be considering when it comes to the rowing machine, take a look at this playlist, which is gonna give you everything that I've reviewed.